A theologian by the name of Martin Luther once said something remarkable. He said, I have held many things in my hands, and I have lost them all. But whatever I have placed in God's hands, that I still possess. Think about what we're being told here. Everything that this man has held on to and put his hands on, Everything that he's tried to fix and change, he's lost it all. He's been unsuccessful with, but he says, whatever I have placed in God's hands, that I still possess. In other words, he's saying, I've had better success in life when I've left things in God's hands. And dear friends, that's what I want to encourage you to do today. Leave it in God's hands. That means pray about it. Stand on God's word concerning that issue or problem. Fast and believe God for it. But more importantly, leave it in the hands of the master. And let me tell you this, when you take things into your hands, you are being disobedient to God because the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The Amplified Translation for 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on him for he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully furthermore philippians 4 verse 6 to 7 says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is telling you that if you have something you're worried about, pray about it. Make your requests known to God and leave it in His hands. If there is something that's making you anxious, the Bible tells you to cast all, all your cares on Jesus Christ. Is there an issue with your children? Is there a private sin you're wrestling with? Whatever it is, remember that we are not to worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Only then can you and I experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. In Psalm 119, verse 71, David said, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. And I've always asked the question, how can it be good for you to be afflicted? How is there any good for you to go through pain, tribulation, and hard times? Now, if I could draw your attention to Acts 14, verse 21 to 22, the Bible reads, they preached the good news to that city and made many disciples then they returned to Lystra, and to Iconium, and to Antioch, strengthening and establishing the hearts of the disciples, encouraging them to remain firm in the faith, saying, It is through many tribulations and hardships that we must enter the kingdom of God. Now, I believe that affliction, although is unpleasant, it is necessary for the Christian man or woman, because if it were not for the struggle you're going through, how would you know that God will never leave you nor forsake you? 
if it were not for the affliction in your body, how else would you know that by his stripes we are healed? If it were not for the financial challenges that you faced, how would you have known that the Lord is a provider? I believe that as we go through life and face different trials, should we remain in the Lord? Should we continue trusting in the mighty name of Jesus Christ? Should we stand firm and believe God's promises to be true? Then we will experience what the Bible talks about in James 1, verse 2 to 4. Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you fall into various trials, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking in nothing. Afflictions bring about a result in you. It leads to spiritual maturity. It produces endurance. Afflictions will result in you praying with a purpose. Afflictions will leave you with a desire to really connect with God because you know that you cannot go through this battle with your own strength. When the Lord allows you to go through tough times, when He allows you to face certain obstacles, He is refining, molding, and shaping you. In His divine plan, He knows that this situation will build your character. This situation will build your faith. This situation will build your prayer life. So be encouraged. The Lord is sovereign. The Lord is in control. I'm sure that each of us, when we've gone through certain things in life, when we face difficulties or challenges, if you're anything like me, then you will go through that situation trying to figure out how will this work for my good. When we are in trouble, how many of us want details from God? How many of us ask God, why am I going through this? How many of us ask God questions like, God, if you're going to make a way out for me, how exactly are you going to do it? At precisely what time will you come to my rescue? How long will I have to go through this before things actually start turning around for my good? But God doesn't always give us answers while we are in the fire. All we can do is have faith in His promises. Promises like those found in Nahum 1 verse 7 which says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and He knows those who trust in Him. We ought to hold on to the promises like those found in Psalm 55 verse 22 which says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. As you mature in Christ, as you grow and develop in your knowledge of God, the Holy Spirit will work within you to broaden your horizons and shift your perspective. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21 says, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So the experiences that I go through, the hardships, the difficulties, the testings, the trials, the sorrows, they're all a part of God's necessary preparation as he is seeking to prepare the vessel to be used by the master, as he empties me of myself, that he might fill me with his fullness, that I no longer live for my own glory, but I live now for his glory, that I serve him in such a way that it brings glory to him. This is why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, let your light so shine before men that when they see your good works, they glorify your Father which is in heaven. As you experience the love of Jesus Christ, as you experience a deep and rewarding relationship, perspective. What is your perspective as a believer in Christ? 
I ask this question because at some point in your walk with the Lord, as you know him more and more, you have to shift your perspective from God, take me here, take me over there, to Lord, I thank you for how far you've brought me. I thank you because I am no longer where I used to be. Perspective. Your perspective goes from always asking and always seeking to receive from God. And it shifts to you, always seeking to serve Him. Your prayer becomes, Lord, how can I serve you? Lord, make me a vessel for your use. We can never repay the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us on the cross. We could never find the appropriate words to fully express how thankful we are for His amazing grace, for His everlasting mercy and providence. Now, it is my belief that all we can offer to the Lord as a sign of gratitude is our lives. All we can offer Jesus Christ is ourselves. We cannot repay Him. We cannot compensate the Lord or do anything to equal His sacrifice. But I tell you, the least we can do is serve Him. The least we can do is to become a servant of the Lord.